Yes. What do we think? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, the chat feature is one place to add a little comment, questions, the Q&A feature, a little bit easier for us to track your questions and you get that direct answer. Sometimes yes. questions can get lost in the chat specifically. So just keeping in mind those two options, but either way, we'll try to, we'll definitely get to your questions. We should have plenty of time. So I'll let oh, Corey I see. take it away. <laughs> okay. I did mean Q&A, everybody, not the chat feature. I apologize for the confusion. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the next slide as we kick this off. So we're going to be discussing a couple key terms and how they apply to you and your organization and how you interact with what TechSoup can offer you. Um, so let's keep on rolling. First, our panelists today, um, we have Rebecca Brown, uh, one of the supervisors for the TechSoup Client Services Department. Um, she'll be manning our chat, our Q&A, um, to make sure that any questions you have are answered in a timely manner. And if you have follow-up questions, um, she'll take care of you there. Um, Kelly Garrett uh, is an associate manager also in the TechSoup Client Services Department. That is the theme. We're all in the TechSoup Client Services Department, by the way. Uh, associate manager, uh, one of our key leaders and a, a knowledge expert when it comes to eligibility. Um, I'm Corey Abood. Um, I'm the manager of TechSoup Client Services. Um, and uh, I'll be leading the presentation today. Uh, let's keep on rolling. Okay, so I mentioned we're gonna be discussing some terms and how they apply to your organization's account um, and how you can interact with us as far as the availability of products and offers uh, that your organization can receive from TechSoup. So um, some term basic terminology here. Um, we have the term qualified. Uh, qualified is typically seen within your TechSoup account. Um, and it's also uh, on the same thing. It's where you can see your account details listed. Uh, and it means that TechSoup has completed our review of your organization and confirmed uh, that your organization is eligible uh, by having 501c3 status as a public charity or as a public library. Validated uh, is typically seen in an offer that uh, is provided by uh, nonprofit portals, um, such as Google for nonprofits. Um, seeing validated indicates that either TechSoup reviewed your organization and notified the offer provider that you are eligible for their nonprofit program, or a validation token was used as part of the process to verify that TechSoup has confirmed your organization's eligibility which leads us to eligible. Eligible is typically referring to an organization's eligibility for a nonprofit offer or program. Um, eligibility for offers is determined by the provider in accordance with their philanthropic goals. So each one of our providers will have their own ideals and set of, of uh, goals uh, for which they'd like their products to be used. Um, and so in accordance with their philanthropic goals, um, they'll set up their program through us. Um, obviously, given that the, the goals may vary from provider to provider, um, the, the, goal, the uh, parameters of these programs may also vary. Um, information such as budget, location, uh, or the size of your organization in some cases, um, and your organization's mission are all factors that play into how eligibility is determined um, based on that philanthropic focus for each program. Um, while all validated organizations are eligible for at least some offers, not every organization meets the eligibility criteria set in place by all the providers, okay? so. Let's move on here. And I have some examples to show you because that's a lot to take in, folks. Um, and so if you want to see uh, your organization's eligibility, um, there's some quick, easy ways to do that on TechSoup.org. Um, so each of these links um, and this slide deck will be provided to you afterwards. So no need to scramble to write anything down. Um, I'll show you what each one of these will look like. So first, a baseline page, the eligibility requirements and restriction page on TechSoup.org. So now let me pull uh, this browser over. That's what it's going to look like. And so from this page, you can view um, the requirements uh, set in place as far as eligibility for each one 
of the programs offered through TechSoup. For an example, Adobe, some of these get very granular. Um, we'll just take a brief look at this one. It really does give you an overview of exactly what is needed, uh, what requirements are needed to be met in order to be eligible for their program. Okay. The next tab here, uh, if you already have a registered account with TechSoup, it's a little easier um, because we can pull in the information you've registered and provide you up front what you'd be eligible for. So let me go to that tab and show you what that would look like if uh, you already have a registered account. Okay. So I've got a couple organizations here. Let's just do this. Okay. So as you can see, the programs that are clickable here, the, these, these links, these are things for which my organization would be eligible for. If it's grayed out, those are things that we would not be able to uh, take part in, okay? The next one, if you've not registered your organization, I would suggest going here. This is the eligibility quiz. And so let me pull that back over and it looks like this. So you just go through, let's say you're a 501c3 nonprofit, you pick your location, it'll refresh like that. <laughs> oh, because I'm logged in, I apologize. Let me log out. Okay, let's go back here. Let me get this one more time because I do want you to see this. Oh, oops. Okay, so if you've not registered, you're not logged in, uh, this is the, the way you can check your organization's eligibility. Again, hypothetical if you've not re yet registered because we need to vet your information, we need to review all the data um, and complete what we need to do on our end to get a, a finalized eligibility assessment. But this could give you an idea. So let's go with Alaska. Organization type, let's say we are civil rights activities. And within that type, there are these subtypes and we'll do elimination of prejudice or discrimination. And let's say we have a budget of a million. Okay, and so once again, we're back at this page where if based on the information you provided, you'd be eligible. These are, these are the options available to you, the hyperlinked options here. Um, okay, so let's go back to the slides here and keep on going. Okay, so what factors impact eligibility? Uh, there's several. Um, so primarily, um, first and foremost, tax exempt status. So to be eligible to participate in our programs, um, you need to have 501c3 status. And there's a couple of ways that you could have obtained that. Uh, you can get formal 501c3 status um, by receiving, by applying for, going through the process and receiving an IRS letter of determination stating that your organization is in fact deemed to be a 501c3 public charity, okay? Uh, the other way you can do this is uh, you might not have your own 501c3 status, but you might be part of what's called a group exemption, which is an, uh, an organized group of, of organizations that all share the, a 501c3 status derived from a parent organization. It's very common with, uh, with churches um, or other large national organizations. Many times there might be a group exemption in place. Um, and as long as you're included on that list, which is stated to the IRS, you're considered to have 501c3 status through the parent organization, okay? Um, the other way is uh, that uh, you might not have formal 501c3 status if you're a public library. Many don't, many also do have 501c3 status, um, but if you don't have 501c3 status, um, 
but you're still listed in the Institute of Museum and Library Services database, we can then make that assessment and uh, you could be eligible for various programs through TechSoup. Okay, primary mission and activities. Oh, there we go. Uh, defining what your organization exists to do. Why are you, why is your nonprofit around? Who are you trying to help? What's your goal? What is your mission? Um, and so we do have uh, examples of these here. I believe I got a tab going with that. Okay, organization types and subtypes. Um, as you may recall, when we were going through the eligibility quiz, um, it had me enter a type and then a subtype. This is a, a listing of many of those uh, that are available to you uh, when you go to register your account with TechSoup. So you see, we try to have uh, something that covers you know, that runs the gamut of possible missions and activities that organizations uh, provide. Okay. Oop. There we go. Okay. Um, so primary mission activities are, are uh, something that corresponds to what we call an activity code. And so what we would do is, for example, if your organization, uh, you are uh, friends of the local library, and primarily what you exist to do is support that library through fundraising, getting donations to, to you know, keep the library uh, healthy. Um, what we would do is we would look at your, your mission statement, um, you know, assess that that is in fact your, your primary focus is fundraising in support of the local library. At that point, we would assign what's called an activity code that corresponds exactly with that mission. And again, just like tax exempt status, there is eligibility that's based on that activity code. Because again, each partner might have different, uh, a different philanthropic focus um, for their programs that they want to offer through TechSoup. Uh, another element, uh, element is budget. Um, this is one where not all programs will have a budget requirement, but some do. Uh, for example, as we saw with the Adobe uh, listings, um, they have a threshold of, of 10 million. And again, that corresponds to where they want their, their services or products targeted based on their objectives and, and philanthropic focus. Another aspect is location. Um, and so we do work with nonprofits all around the world. Um, we have uh, ex acceptance uh, certain embargoed countries. So um, it's important that, you know, if you are working from, we have TechSoup Canada, for example. If your organization is based in Canada, you would register with the TechSoup partner uh, that runs the Canadian programs. The eligibility will be based on location in that way. Okay. Let's go here. Um, I'm going to pass the mic to Kelly, who's going to take over for the next couple slides, and she's going to talk to you about uh, some uh, specific religious organization eligibility requirements. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you, Corey, for that great overview. Um, hopefully that's really cleared things up for you all. Um, in the um chat just so you know the links that we looked at i did ping the i did ping those into the chat so if you were wanted to follow along they are in there um and again we will you will automatically get this recording and slide deck sent to you after this meeting um to the email address you registered with TechSoup events might be different than your regular TechSoup login so just keep that in mind if you don't see it and i did also put in our link to our archives for the recordings and the slides so we've got it everywhere for you you'll be able to come back um so now we've kind of gone over the overview. I'd like to dive into a little bit more specific situations about eligibility. Um, one big question we get from organizations, um, specifically religious ones like churches, um, places of worship, things like that, um, is are am I eligible? Um, as Corey kind of explained, we are we do require. Um, organizations to be 501c3 public charities recognized by the federal IRS or, you know, a public library that's in that IMLS um, database. Um, so that is a requirement. It is not something we can bypass. It's not something we can grant an exception to. And um, a lot of places of worship are concerned that uh, 
that we're not recognizing automatic tax exempt status that religious organizations have. Um, I'm not going to read this whole statement to you. You can reference it when you get the copy of it. Um, so it's something you can come back to. But basically, most places of worship um, are eligible, and they're usually eligible through their own independent 501c3 nonprofit status, or they're covered by what's called a group exemption. A lot of um, denominations, their headquarters or regional, either national or regional, will register with the IRS as a non as a 501c3, and then they're given a group exemption, which means all of their affiliated organizations um, get an official subordinate status by the IRS, which that allows them to use their parent organization's EIN number, um, which is the tax ID, which we use to help identify tax status. Um, and then they can register and go through that path because they are technically a 501c3 under this umbrella of the group exemption. So if unfortunately religious organizations that are not uh, part of a group exemption or don't have their independent status are not eligible. And we do hear from a lot of folks that, you know, being um, tax exempt and 501c is the exact same thing for churches. And that's not actually accurate. Um, our wonderful legal team helped craft this explanation for folks that are curious what, what the differences are. And there is a link there um, in case anyone in here is a place of worship, curious about group exemptions, curious about what the differences are. Main thing though, is that, um, you know, churches automatically are tax exempt. That extra step to getting the 501c3 is what a lot of donors want because it just guarantees there's certain aspects that are being honored. Um, you know, where is the money going? How is it being used? Things along those lines that, you know, other 501c and non-501c3 organizations don't quite meet up to. It's the hardest tax exempt status to acquire. And it just, you have to make sure you're meeting a lot of different criteria, which is a guarantee that most our donor partners or uh, offer partners, as we call them, um, really want to see. So it's something that TechSoup requires and our partners require because it's just guaranteeing that, you know, you're, all the boxes are checked off of the type of organizations we're looking to work with. Um, they're doing good out there, um, which I, most nonprofits are doing good out there, but this is just that extra guarantee that we get from the government. Um, it, next slide, please. So that covers religious orgs. Again, we do work with you. Um, this next one is, you know, now we've talked about group exemptions, you know, oh, well, if I'm affiliated with an organization that has C3 status, can't I just join with their information and use their account or, you know, register with my own information, but use their EIN tax ID. A lot of times these are fiscally sponsored organizations or programs. Um, what a fiscally sponsored organization or program is, is it's usually a separate entity that has, um, partnered up with a 501c3 nonprofit, and they are being sponsored by that 501c nonprofit, and that allows them to access a lot of different don donation programs around the world and the country. Um, unfortunately for TechSoup and our partners, we do not work with that kind of relationship. Uh, we do need to make sure that, you know, the fiscally sponsored organization is once again meet, meeting all those requirements that guarantee that our partners and TechSoup are, you know, donating discounting offers to organizations that are meeting our requirements. Um, so until a fiscally sponsored organization or program is able to uh, um, acquire its own independent status or gets fully brought into its sponsor, like say it stops being a separate entity, they join, it's now a department in there, that's totally fine. If you're part owned and operated by that organization and you're not a separate entity, totally eligible. But if you're a separate entity that's basically being sponsored, Unfortunately, you're going to have to go through the you're going to have to go through the process of getting 501c3 status to be eligible for TechSoup, and that goes for our partners' um, programs too. Like if you go to Microsoft for nonprofits and try to register, you're not going to be um, validated for that. Same with Google for nonprofits. Um, anything that's off the TechSoup.org website has the same requirements as when you're registering with TechSoup. So usually, a good idea to start with TechSoup, see if you get qualified. If you do, that means you're probably going to be able to go to other programs. But, you know, as Corey showed you, maybe go and check first if you're eligible um, and then go from there. If you're curious about this, we have a great article that's listed right there um, under learn more about fiscally spons fiscal sponsorship eligibility, um, breaks it a bit more down. And uh, later on in this slide, I do have a link on how you can contact customer service if you do want to follow up with us about any of this or have any questions specific to your organization, we can definitely assist you. 
Um, next slide, please. And that's what I've got right here. So requesting an organization type review. Um, so if you go in and you see you're not eligible and you go and you look and see what your organization's type and subtype is and you're like, you know, I, I just don't think this is accurate or I'm really confused why I was put in this or, you know, this makes sense, but, you know, I, I kind of want to ask some clarifying find questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to our customer service. Um, we client services is part like we handle customer service. So it'll be someone from our team that you work with. Um, I always recommend going to our contact us page. Um, it is linked at the bottom of techsoup.org. Pretty much on every page, there's a contact us link. That has the current how to contact us stuff. We have been playing around a little bit lately with different schedules to try to see how we can accommodate all of our members with our own limited resources. TechSoup is a nonprofit as well. So sometimes we are a little understaffed um, during the busy times. And so this is the best way to get, make sure you're getting in touch with us is has the current hours, current contact methods. Um, and right now we do have phone hours um, or phones. You can call us from the, sorry about that. We do have phones available Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. On, and then after that, from 11 to 4 p.m., we do have a live chat option. And on Fridays, we have our live chat option open from 7 to 4. Again, all that information is on the Contact Us forms. You don't have to remember all that. Just go, go to our Contact Us page, and you'll see what's available. And it has instructions on how to get in touch with us. And just so you know, we don't have AI. Everyone you're talking to is a real person. The chat is going to be a real person talking to you. Um, it might take them a minute to get online with you. but you know, sometimes there's that assumption that we've got the resources like Amazon or somebody that's got an AI function. We don't. So just keep that in mind. It's a real person that's going to give you live support um, in real time. Um, going back to organization type reviews. Again, if you, you know, make sure you look at it. You know, if it makes sense, it makes sense. It's just one of those things that, as we kind of mentioned in a previous slide, you know, you're not going to be, no organization is eligible for every single nonprofit program um, available. It's totally dependent on what every company that's partnered with us wants to focus on. We have some partners that, you know, for a while we're only donating to, you know, specific types of organizations. They really wanted to focus on uh, homeless shelters, for example. Now, does that mean they dislike any other type of organization? No, they just budgeted a certain amount that they could donate or discount per their fiscal year, and they decided their resources were best going to go into, um, into the program uh, or into the organization types that they're looking at. Again, that doesn't mean they dislike you or they want to go out like, or they've got an issue with you. It just means that's how it's going to match up with their philanthropic throw focus and meet their budget, that they've budgeted for their donations and discounts. So just keep that in mind. If it looks accurate, you're not eligible, you're still welcome to reach out to us. But a lot of times, you know, nothing's going to change and it isn't a comment on, on you or your organization. It's just, it's just how we make sure all the different resources get around. And on top of that, TechSoup does not make that call. We let the partners know what what types of organization types we have, and they tell us what's eligible and not eligible. So it's not tech soup going against you. It's just the company's focus on what they want to do. So keeping that in mind, still always welcome to contact us with any questions. You want us to double check, absolutely can do that. Um, no hard feelings. And, you know, we do have an eligibility team that we can always check in with if we're not, if we're kind of on the fence about stuff, we do make sure we do a thorough, thorough review before we make a determination. But Things change, you know, if you registered in 2014 and it's, you know, 10 years later now, you might have changed what your mission and vision is and we might be able to change some stuff around for you. But, um, you know, never hurts to ask, always welcome to. And that is all I've got about organization type reviews. Um, I believe next slide. Yes. So um, two other things to keep in mind um, is that if you're not eligible for TechSoup, say you're a 501c4 a C13, a different type of 501c3. Maybe you don't have it. Maybe you're just a place of worship that is automatically tax exempt. It doesn't even, hasn't even gone through the IRS for anything. That's fine. We still want to try to work with you. We still want to support our members as best we can. So as we've got a list here, we've got several different um, things that will allow you to still work with TechSoup, learn from us, communicate with other organizations. Um, you're in an event right now. So this is something everybody can join. 
Um, courses is another great um, option. You know, it, it, they do cost a little bit of money, but they're really well priced. It's the best in the sector. Um, and that's a great place to go if you want to get any learning. Even if you can't buy a product from us, it's still a great place to go to for training, information. You know, we've got Google for nonprofits um, courses. We have, you know, fundraising courses, a lot of really cool stuff that anybody that's in the nonprofit sector, even if they're not eligible for the programs, they're still, will probably find that useful. Forums is a great place to connect with your fellow nonprofits, questions, comments, concerns get posted there, make connections, you never know. Um, articles and how to's can be useful, just like along the same lines of courses, same with blog, the blog's a great place to go, because um, we do put a lot of different um, content out there, you know, I just recently saw one that was about, you know, how to optimize marketing and fundraising techniques in 2023, really cool different blog stuff that that comes out periodically, and we try to make sure it's relevant and available for all types of organizations out there. Um, the other thing uh, to keep in mind is our terms of use policy. Um, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. I'll just give you a little gist of it. But the idea is that since we do have these eligibility restrictions and we do actually do a thorough review of your organization to confirm you have the right tax status or your public library, what your organization type is, who registered you, you know, is, is with your organization, things along those lines. That means that, you know, we've made your organization eligible for certain things. You, uh, we don't want organizations sharing their account, buying things for other people, like, or basically your accounts for your organization and nobody else. If you've got programs and departments, they're welcome to be added to your account and request products and services as much as they'd like and are eligible for. But if you're friends with the nonprofit down the street and they just don't have the bandwidth to, you know, register with TechSoup and you're just going to get them an office, you know, standard for them real quick because they just need it. That's not allowed. Um, we do need every organization to come and register themselves. They do need to request products only for their use and for their employee volunteer, or you know, if you've got a class or something, it has to be used for your mission, your vision, your activities. It can't be just given out, sold. Um, a popular question I get is, hey, I'm having an auction. I wanna raise money. I'm gonna buy five laptops from TechSoup and then I'm gonna give them away for the auction. Even though let's go into towards your activities and helping fundraise for you, that's really not allowed. We, you can't resell the stuff. You can't give it away, even if it's a charity program. And there is some, there's a few programs that have a little wiggle room for that. Um, there's some, like, I believe one of the, I believe it's the Dell catalog. That's one that allows friends and families to use the nonprofit rates, uh, stuff like that. So just make sure you're checking out that eligibility page Corey showed you. Um, that's broken down by program. The nice thing is that all that information on that nonprofit uh, eligibility and restrictions page is also on the product page. So when you go to TechSoup.org, find your product, click on it. On the right hand side, underneath where the um, admin fee is and add the cart button, on the right side, you'll see an eligibility tab. And if you click on that, it has the exact same information. Also, you know, you start off in the description, a lot of times it will call out, you know, if there's a friends and family plan that you can um, access. So make sure you always thoroughly review your product pages and the eligibility stuff before you check out. We have a pretty strict no refunds and no return, like no exchanges policy. So important to keep this terms of use in mind. You don't want to be breaking it. And then you also want to be keeping in mind, you know, checking all of the product page information before you you move forward with getting something and then realize, oops, I bought this for so-and-so and I can't give it to so-and-so and now I can't get my money back. That's the worst. I, I, you know, you're trying to do a good thing and then it just doesn't work out. So keep that in mind. And again, you can always contact customer service. If you've got any concerns, you're not sure, um, you know, any feedback you've got of, hey, I read this and I thought it said that. We love feedback. Um, we always take it. We can, again, that's what we're there for is to support you and answer your questions. And that is what I've got to say about that. So um, that's the end of this presentation. We've still got 30 minutes left. We are happy to hang out until 11 a.m. If everybody's got questions, again, you've got that QA um, option to post your question for any quick answer. Um, I see folks have been asking questions in the chat, which Rebecca has been helping answer. Um, so now's the time. We'll give it five minutes. And if it gets quiet, um, 
we will end a little early here, but thank you so much for joining us again. This is our first time hosting our own little webinar for our office hours, and it's something we'd like to do in the future. So um, keep an eye out. We will continue having these, um, these meetings. And uh, Corey or Rebecca, I'm not sure if you guys want to add anything um, along this topic. Well, just that uh, if, if if you're unsure about anything related to eligibility, reach out to us. We're happy to help you with any questions you have. Okay. Okay. Any questions? I, well, thank you, Marcia. I see that someone said that this is quite helpful. Thank you. Really glad to hear it. Uh, Patty asked, will the content of the chat be saved and forwarded? I don't believe that the webinar chat transcript gets saved. I think the Q&A stuff does. So if you have a question you want to be able to reference back to, that's why we recommend going to the Q&A function. It should be right next to the chat. Um, and if you click on that, you should be able to do it. Um, there is no audio, unfortunately. This is, uh, you have to type in your question. Um, again, the Q&A place is probably the best spot to put your question. We'll hang out and wait for you um, if you are, uh, need to ask something. Um, and again, if something pops up or we end and those you're like, oh shoot, I meant to ask this, go to that contact us page. We've got a live chat that's open right now and our phone line is open for another 30 minutes as well. If you do wanna to speak to someone in person, give us a call. I'm happy to drop that in there again. I'll show you where that contact us page is. Yeah, so let's show them the contact clear us. But the link is also now in the webinar chat channel. So you can click on that um, as well. But see, it's down here, contact us. It's pretty much every, it's pretty much on every page for techsoup.org. It's not on the events.techsoup.org page. So just make sure you're on our main our main website, but you'll see we've got chat support. We've got our phone number listed right there. If anyone wants to call us after this, um, if you need to mail us something, we've got our mailing address, um, all that good stuff. Let's see here. Um, I see someone asked about uh, breaking us up in entities. You're trying to set up our own account domain because you're being broken up in, into entities. I would recommend reaching out to, we have a great team that's separate from customer service. Um, it's called, uh, it's our cloud service provider team, CSP. Um, they are wonderful and they do have a great um, free consultation form. I'm going to drop that into the chat as well. So if anyone, I've seen a couple of questions asking about Microsoft stuff. Um, so that is right there in the chat. And I think um, recommend going there. They have their own separate chat. So on that, uh, if you go to that URL, there's a form you can submit. If you can request a callback, um, they set up, they send you a calendar link where you can actually pick the date and time. Really fantastic. Um, it says, you know, cloud service provider team. It's only Microsoft stuff. They do not answer anything about other cloud products. It's not for you to go for QuickBooks Online or anything like that. It's specific to the Microsoft cloud stuff. Um, and they do help. They can assist with um, Microsoft nonprofit registrations. And um, if you're looking for new domains, they're probably the best person. Um, Yes, yeah, so I, you know, the chat save file, it's a webinar, so it's a little bit different. Um, I'm not the expert here. Aretha, who's on the call, you might be able to see uh, she has, she's our webinar expert. I think she stepped away, but I will definitely double check with her. If we can do it, we will, but I've been in a couple webinars and I've always heard that the chat wasn't able to send it. I'm here, Kelly. No, um, we, we do not send the chat out. Um, if you're not able to save it yourself, that is a Zoom that is a Zoom platform issue. So I apologize. Yes, so um, we can definitely, um, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for all the thank yous. Um, and yes, the, you can access, we also have a YouTube channel. So we have our past um, webinars archive that you are welcome to 
um, access on our website. We also have a, a YouTube channel. Um, so if you look up TechSoup, you should be able to find it. Lots of great videos out there. I'd maybe look at the date of when stuff's uploaded. We kind of keep everything around. So if it's something from, you know, five, 10 years ago, you know, the tech world, it's probably not the best. It's probably not the best idea to look at something from 10 years ago. You know, it's probably best to look at the more recent ones, but it's a great resource as well. Um, we also have on our website, if you click on the help pay, uh, help tab at the top, that takes you to TechSoup support, really great articles and answers a lot of stuff, a lot of this information about eligibility, you can find right there in the rules and eligibility, or just type in qualification in the search bar, or eligible eligibility in the search bar, things like that. So go. So yeah, welcome to reach out at any time. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes here, see if any more questions trickle through. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate the love. You know, it's we are in this because we love nonprofits. You know, we're always we like to help you. We want to see you all succeed. So, you know, when you give us a call, keep that in mind. Nobody, nobody got into this job not wanting to help out. So you're welcome. Um, you know, and we appreciate it. It's it's fabulous talking to y'all um on chats and on phones and things like that. It's it's always a pleasant experience. And the sector is just so lovely, you know. You can't go wrong in the nonprofit sector, in my opinion. <laughs> Perfect. All right, I'll give it until 1040. So that's two more minutes. And then if we don't have any more questions, um, we will let you all go. And um, I, if anyone asks to be reached out to, we will do that today. Um, some of us sent, some people send us private direct messages. So we will make sure to get back to you if you ask for a contact. Um, we try to be really good about getting back to folks within one business day when you do reach out to us. But again, we're nonprofit. Sometimes it's more like three to five business days since, you know, we ourselves um, have our own resources and stuff we have to manage. So keep that in mind. Too. Okay, one more minute and then we're, we'll wrap it up here. Looks like nothing else is trickling in, but we'll give it one more minute. <laughs> Oh, I just saw someone ask, uh, when is the next one? We don't have it um, planned just yet. Um, probably, we might have one next month, but probably July, since it takes a little bit of time to gather all of our things we need together for a presentation. So I would say keep an eye out for July. We do send out, if you're signed up for events, you do periodically get notifications about upcoming events. So you should see marketing about it um, if needed. You can also periodically check the event upcoming events catalog, which is listed on our techsoup.org. If you click on community at the very top, the drop down option, you'll see upcoming events and webinars. Um, that's probably how you found us today, but just want to re reiterate, that's where you can go. Um, and then under resources, where uh, if you want to show them, Corey, really quickly, the uh, resources is where you'll see past um, events and webinars archived. So that's where you can go for this. Is That's where this will pop up. Usually takes us about sometimes up to 24 hours to get it uploaded here and to send it out to you all, but you will get it within the next day or two. Um, you will see it here and you'll get the email follow up. No problem. Thank you again for everyone for your kind words. Um, we're going to wrap it up now. So keep an eye out for our next one. Reach out to us at, you know, the contact us page if you need. And um, hopefully you all have a great day and a fantastic upcoming weekend. Hopefully you all have a three day weekend like so many people out there. So enjoy it if you do. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Thank you.